what we think is normal is not really normal for other people. And we shouldn't judge them. Just because they come from a different part of the world, you always have to remember there's different animals there. There's different plants there, different ecosystem, different kind of weather. And all of that influences the people in that area. So being human and that basically we are the same inside of us. We laugh and cry and get angry and get scared at the same kind of things. We all need earth, wind, fire, and water to live. We all bleed red. We all have the same foundation. But where we live also influences how we are, what foods we eat. Today in America, it's not the same for us Native people. For us Native people, our bodies are used to wild meat, wild game like ducks and deer and buffalo. These are foods of Lakota people. Now, in the Black Hills, where our holy land is, there are bears, but we don't eat them. The reason why is because in our star knowledge stories, the bear is considered two-legged like humans are. So this is why we don't eat bears. Now, other tribes do, yeah, like Anishinaabe people, other Indians up in Canada, and maybe some in Montana and Idaho and Washington State area, those areas, maybe those Indians did. But their culture is different. Their stories are different. Their language is different. And they might have their reasons, but for us, we don't. Because in Lakota, bears are two-legged. They're considered two-legged. This is very, very ancient information. There's lots of stories about that. And a common theme of these stories is that the sacred entities or beings, these are not people. These are not spirits either. They're wakantanka. It's an organization. Christianity defines wakantanka as God, but no, it's not. It's not God. It's an organization. And there's more than one. And the reason why there's more than one is because they do things differently. They all work for the same goal. It's just that they go about it in a different way. Well, the one that is concerning the land, this Wakantanka, in ancient times, they would meet in various places when the earth was only one continent. And this bear, it was a giant bear. And he walked upright. He didn't walk on the fours. So they called him Hunu. That's what that means. Two-legged. Hu is leg, and Num is short for Numpa, which means two. But his name was Hunu. He was a giant bear, and he would walk around, and he saw where the Wakantanka were meeting. So he would go kind of close, and then he would pretend to be asleep. Yeah, so he would be laying on the ground on his back and just snoring away. And, and then the Swakantanka people would have their meeting nearby. And he wasn't really asleep. He was listening to their language because the Wakantanka language is different than Lakota. But he learned it yeah, just by listening to them talk. These Wakantanka people, they would sing their sacred songs. And so this bear learned it. Yeah, He learned all the songs and what they were talking about. He learned that. And as a result, he became very, very wise. So this is why one of our symbols for wisdom is the bear. Another one is the owl. And through these stories, there's lots of interesting things that happen. And one of the stories, it's a really cool story. I'll just say it really short because there's so many characters in the story. If I tell it normal, it might sound confusing because there's so many characters. 
So I'll just give an overview. At this time, the people were not human yet. They're under the earth. They're human in form, but they're not human yet. So these people are called Pte Oyate. Now today, a lot of people think that means the Buffalo Nation. No, it doesn't. Buffalo is Ptechchaka. Now some people might say, well, I thought it was Tatanka. No, it's not. Tatanka is a buffalo bull. But the name for buffalo itself is Ptechchaka. Now, there were no buffalo yet either, okay? There were no humans and there were no buffalo yet. But there was this group of people called Pte Oyate, and they were living under the ground. There's millions of them that were there, and they're human in form. And their leader, his name was Tatanka. See, it has nothing to do with buffalo. The word Tatanka in the very beginning had nothing to do with buffalo because there were no buffalo yet. So this bear met with the leader, Tatanka, and he said, I have a plan. The bear said, I have an idea where you and me can join the Wakantanka. And the leader, Tatanka, he said, oh, gosh, I don't know. He said, that sounds kind of scary. And the bear said, oh, no, I have this. Just listen to my idea and see what you think. So Tatanka said, okay. So the bear said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to make drums and rattles. And I'm going to teach you a song. And what you have to do is you have to teach all your people how to make drums and rattles. And you teach them the song. And the bear had a second meeting with Tatanka. And he said, okay, when the Tatanka meet close to your people, I'm going to tell you. And at that time, I want you to sing that song. And he said, the thunder being, Wakia, will be the first one to hear you sing. And she might think that you're another Wakia. So she's going to come and see what's going on. Don't be scared. He said, don't be scared. She's just observing. And she's going to like it because this is a very beautiful song. And my hope is that she will say to you, this is beautiful what you did. I'm going to bring you before the Wakantanka and I'm going to ask them to make you Wakantanka. And the bear said, and if this happens, tell them that I taught you. This is what the bear was saying. Tell them that the bear taught you and that the only way you will become Wakantanka is if me, the bear, will also become Wakantanka. So they agreed to that. They all learned the song. There's a bunch of people down there and they're all practicing the song. And then the time came. So the bear called for Tatanka and say, okay, they're going to meet in four days, so get ready, and on the fourth day, start singing. And so they took out their drums four days later, they started to sing this song, and in the distance, in the west direction, suddenly, Wakia, the thunder being, heard this boom, 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 boom. Oh, that was loud. And she thought, oh, Another Wakia. So she was flying around the earth trying to locate the sound and she found it. And she was able to go into the earth and she found the people and she was watching them and she was just amazed. All these Pte Oyate sitting around millions of drums and they were all singing this song and the women were standing behind them with their rattles, and they were singing along, and she was just amazed. And the the people were just scared, yeah, because there's a thunder being standing there. She's a giant. And they were scared, because this is a wakantanka, this is a sacred being. And she was smiling at them. And they were like, wow, this is amazing. So she waited until they were done. 
when you sing a song, you sing it four times. That's Lakota tradition. You sing it four times. There's an exception to that rule, but I'll tell that another time. But the foundation rule is you sing a song four times. So she waited until they were done. And then she said, who is your leader? So Tatanka came forward and he introduced himself. And she said, this is really beautiful what you've done. She said, this is so beautiful. And my heart really feels good. She said, my heart really feels good to hear all these voices sing this song. Is this incredible, she said. And she said, I want to take you to the Wakatanka. They're meeting in a little while. She said, I want to take you there, and I'm going to tell them what happened. And they might ask you to become Wakatanka. So Tatanka said, okay. So he was really scared, yeah, because he's standing in front of a thunder being. So she took him to the meeting. And the members of the Wakantanka were there. So she took Tatanka in front of them. And he's really scared because these are all sacred beings. And she told them the story of what just happened. And they were amazed. So they started talking about it. What Tatanka did was really good. What do you think? Should we make him Wakantanka? They said, yeah, let's do that. So they asked him. And Tatanka said, no. And they were surprised. They were like, huh? Why do you say no? And Tatanka said, because I didn't teach the people this. He said, a giant bear taught me these songs. He taught me how to make a drum and rattle. And then I taught this to my people. He said, I will accept your offer to become Wakantanka only if you accept the bear too. And they said, you know what, that bear is pretty wise. So they asked for the bear to come present himself. So Hunum came walking in. Remember, this bear walks upright. So he came walking in, and then the Wakantanka addressed him as Hunum. And they said, did you teach them these things? Hunum said, yes, I did. They said, that was a wonderful thing. It's a very beautiful story, and this is really going to help the people. So they said, we want to make both of you Wakantanka. They said, to Hunum, the bear, you will be the overseer of wisdom. And for Tatanka, he's the overseer of several things. One of them is the chastity of women. When a girl gets her first period, they have a ceremony for that. And during the ceremony, she becomes a sister to Tatanka. So she's known as a buffalo woman. But that comes later. I'm just showing you how this has to do with Tatanka being the overseer of the chastity of women. So they accept. And so this is how Tatanka and Honum, the giant bear, become members of this Wakantanka organization. So then the Wakantanka, they want to hear the song. So they go near where the Pte Oyate are living and Tatanka tells them, let's sing the song again. So the Pte Oyate start singing. And the Wakantanka, they really like it. Now all the Wakantanka are listening to this song and they're all going, wow, listen to those voices. You feel love. You feel compassion, you feel honesty, you feel prayer, you feel respect, you feel humility. These are Lakota virtues. You hear that in their voices. So when they got done, Wakia, the thunder being, she blessed the drums. She gave the drums, a cleansing power. And she told the people, whenever you're sad, beat the drum. You don't have to sing. Just beat the drum. When you're lonely, beat the drum. 
When you're scared, beat the drum. When you're disappointed, when you're jealous, when you're just feeling not good, beat the drum. And then you'll be cleansed. You'll be okay. And when you come to a new place and you're scared, beat the drum. When you feel troubled and disturbed, beat the drum. This is what she said. This is the instruction. So this is how we got the drum. And the drum represents cleansing. Now, in the powwow world, which is contemporary, and the powwow world is only about 120-some years old, they say the drum represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Well, that's a beautiful thing. But that's only 100 years old, okay? What I'm telling you is hundreds of thousands of years old. I'm telling you the ancient, ancient way. I'm not a powwow person because in the powwow world, there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of narcissism. There's a lot of vanity in that world. That's not the traditional way. That started out kind of nice in the early 1900s, but it developed in a bad way because money got involved. So if I go to a powwow, I like to go to the small ones where they just go to have fun. They go to eat and socialize and just have a good time with no alcohol, no drugs, just to have a good time. No money's involved. Those are the powwows I like because that's close to the traditional way. Really, in the Lakota star knowledge way, the drum represents cleansing. So the drum has the power of the West direction. Because the West, this is what it's all about. Rebirth, renewal, rejuvenation, cleansing, healing. That comes from the West, which is the color black. So you see? In the Lakota way, black is a really, really good color. So this is how we get the drum. And rattles are the same thing. Rattles do the same thing. Rattles have cleansing power too. And Wakia's instruction is that if you don't have a drum, and if you don't have any rattles, then clap your hand. Like that. Do that. Then the steady beat like a drum. Just make a steady drum beat and do this and you achieve the same effect. You achieve the same effect that a drum does so that you cleanse the area. When you go into a strange place, you can do that. If you don't have a drum, start clapping your hands. Walk around the area and clap your hands. This is our custom. Not many people do this today. So I'm telling you, so you can even if you're feeling down, you can do this too. Don't be concerned about what other people think of you. Just go someplace private and you can do that. So this is how that works. When I was a teacher in South Dakota, I was teaching some students in high school and there was this young guy, probably about 13 years old at the time. And <laughs> I teach these stories to them. Because this belongs to them. This is part of their culture. What I just told you, I taught that to my students. And this guy was really an exceptional young man. Yeah? <laughs> He's a funny guy. <laughs> anyway, one Sunday, the mother wanted to visit her family. So they thought they would make it a day trip leave early in the morning and come back in the evening time. Anyway, he had football practice and he didn't want to miss because he was on the football team. So he asked his parents if he could stay home and they felt, well, he seems to be responsible. And so they said, okay, you can stay, but just make sure you lock up when you go and things like that. Make sure the stove is off and the lights are off and everything and stuff like that. So he said, okay. So then they left in the morning and they probably got home about 10 o'clock at night. And 
There's a guy who said he heard something in the house. He was home alone. It was nighttime now, and he heard something in the house. <laughs> he remembered what I said, and he didn't have a drum, and he didn't have any rattles. He started walking around the house, clapping his hands like this, okay? <laughs> Just then, his family pulled in. They were looking, and they were saying, geez, how come he has all the lights on? <laughs> he he was going around the house, turning all the lights on in every room. <laughs> they saw him through the windows, and he was clapping his hands, <laughs> walking. <laughs> so his mom said, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> So they came walking in, and she she went went to find him, and and she said, "Son, what are you doing?" So he saw, he turned towards her, and he started clapping his hands, walking towards her, and he said, "What are you doing, son?" "Oh, mom," he said, "I thought you were an evil spirit." He said. <laughs> Uh, shit, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were an evil spirit, he said. <laughs> Clapping his hands, going, walking in her direction. <laughs> oh, man. But see, this is our way to humor. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that guy told me a funny story. Yeah? That was a funny guy. So anyway, this is how we got the drum. And in the Lakota Star Knowledge way, the drums represent cleansing and so forth. So for us, this is one of our cultural beliefs. From another story, we get the cycle of the woman, which is monthly. And we get the cycle of the man, which is yearly. A lot of people don't realize that men have a cycle. The women's cycle is associated with the moon, and the man's cycle is associated with the sun, the earth's journey around the sun. So it's yearly. And the woman, her cycle has three components that are inside her body. They occur inside her body. Basically, humans have four stages in life. But women have three more. So this created an imbalance. So for men to come back into balance with women, we have to do extra things. So... This has to do with these cycles. Yeah, for the women's cycle, these three extra developments are internal. But for men, it's external. That means we have to do certain ceremonies. And this is why in those three ceremonies, they're men only. And it's not because we're trying to be better. No, no, no. It's the opposite. It's because women are above mankind. And the way mankind can come back into balance with women is to do these three ceremonies. So a lot of people misinterpret that when they say that these three ceremonies are for men only. All these feminists start saying, well, hey, if a man can do it, a woman can do it too, and all that kind of thing. But that's not really true because women can get pregnant and have babies and men cannot. I'm not being misogynistic or sexist or whatever here, but that's just a biological fact. There is a difference between men and women. And it's more than physical. It's also mental, spiritual, and emotional. That there are things that women are just more capable of doing. But that puts an imbalance between women and men. So to come back into balance with women... Men have to do extra things in life. Now, it's for this reason that men are the only ones who can have a drum. Because this is one of the extra things they have to do. For the women, it's internal. So I know some feminists, 
and there's lots of native feminists too that they're not going to like what I just said, but hey, I'm speaking for the ancestors, okay? I'm not speaking for the feminists. I'm speaking for the ancestors. This is the ancestral voice. This is coming from the stories. So it's not about putting women down at all. It's about trying to catch up to women. That's the reason. So this is why when this giant bear talks to Tatanka, he says to teach the men about the drum and to make the drum. And for the women, it's the rattles. So these two cycles, the cycle of a man and the cycle of a woman, they complement each other. That means they can go good together. Neither one is more important than the other. They're just different. But they can complement each other. They can go well with each other. So, for this reason, the tradition started that men sit around the drum and the women stand around the men with their rattles and they sing together. This represents the cycle of a man and the cycle of a woman complementing each other. Now, there are exceptions, people. There are exceptions. See, the Lakota way is not dogmatic. For example, a girl can sit at the drum. Before she gets her first period, she can sit at the drum. When a woman passes through menopause, she can sit at the drum. Those are exceptions. When a woman cannot have children, she can sit at the drum. Because sometimes a lady, for whatever reason, is unable to have children. And in some cultures, that's seen as a bad thing. When a woman is barren, they say, and they really make it look like it's bad. But in the Lakota world, when a woman is unable to have children, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. Now she can do these other things. She can do these three ceremonies. She can sit at the drum. She can have a drum. You see what I mean? So when a woman is unable to have children, it's not a sin. It's not bad. Like in the Bible, when these old stories of somebody was married to so-and-so, but she couldn't have babies, so he took a second wife, and the women fought each other and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> in the Lakota world, when a woman cannot have children, there's nothing wrong. But now she can do other things that other women her age cannot do. So there's always going to be exceptions. These are the kind of things this bear was teaching to Tatanka, and Tatanka taught these to the Pteoyate people. When Wakia, the thunder being, said to Tatanka, I want to take you to the Wakatanka, and I'm going to tell them what happened, and they might ask you to become Wakatanka. Tatanka was really scared, yeah, because he's standing in front of a thunder being. And you can't look into the eyes of a thunder being, or you'll become Heoka. <laughs> and they call you, yeah, the thunders call you. This only happens to men. And again, it has to do with that story of why men have to do certain things. So this is why only men can become Heoka, so he didn't look her in the eye because he might accidentally become Heoka, and then everything is going to go nuts. Yeah? <laughs> they speak in opposites. They say the opposite of what they really mean. So if the Heoka comes to you and says, I hate you, he means he loves you. When the Heoka tells you, you're going to die today, what he means is you're going to live long. See, they say the opposite of what they mean. And they do things backwards. They dress backwards. And the simplest things, like sitting on the ground, they do it in a really complex way. And it makes people laugh. So that's why sometimes they're funny. This is Heoka. So they knew this. yeah. So when Tatanka was talking with Wakia, he didn't look her in the eye. 
that's because of this reason. So for us, this is our Lakota Star Knowledge beliefs. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota Star Knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars, and this price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Tanhan Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book cost 119 American dollars, and this price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online, and I give spiritual consultations as well. The price for these sessions are 35 American dollars an hour. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is Hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H E H A K A, the number 7 at yahoo.com. And also include your shipping address and your email address when you send your payment. Ha, oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much.